What's good, everyone, and welcome to this in-depth review of Noisia's brand new plugin, Vision 4X, created with Excite Audio. Now, I gotta say, I was pretty excited when I first saw this plugin show up because so far, I've only been using FL's Wave Candy for spectral analysis, and I haven't found anything that comes close in terms of detail, in terms of how easy it is and how much information I'm getting from the analysis. So we're gonna have a look at all of the features, all the options, everything that's included in this so you guys know what to look for, how to work it, and if you should get it or not. First off, we're going to look at the panel here on the left, which has all of the settings. So within general, we can decide which part of the frequency spectrum we want to visualize, the left signal, the right signal, the mid or side. This is pretty useful, although I would love to be able to observe both mid and side at the same time with a separate color. That would provide something like what I'm usually getting on span, which is able to project the mono signal and the side signal separately, and you can compare them very efficiently. So that's something that I feel would be a very nice add-on. Sadly, we don't have that available, but we can still compare them by toggling between both. Now we have the side here, everything that's not in the mono signal. Now, these are the options. Within that, we can also rotate the screen. Essentially, it, it switches the interface. If that's maybe more your vibe, you want to get the other things up top. You want to have it going down. Very cool that you can resize these to your personal liking. Very cool indeed. Now we got time overlay. That's whether or not it flows from the left to the right or it just resets as it goes. So this will keep updating compared to if it were this overlay. It actually resets like that. I prefer this view, but it's up to you what you like. And then you can sync it to the BPM if you want to get more kind of on-beat results. Not super relevant, you can turn that off and go with a speed that sort of looks visibly useful. Then we get to the spectrum. This is really where most of my excitement and attention has been going. So we can change the range, we can zoom in in certain sections, which is very useful if you want to get a closer look at a certain part of the spectrum. And then we can set the range, and this is essentially the weighing of the details here in the spectrum. Um, so far it's been looking like getting just the noise out of there, but having enough contrast with the parts of the spectrum that are most pronounced is the best way to get your visual information. Then we have a few options when it comes to coloration. I love the heat map because it really shows us which part of the spectrum are the loudest very clearly. You have more contrast, you know, this is just brightness essentially, less different hues are available. But you know, if you're not really looking for that amount of detail and you just want to get, actually turbo is also quite nice. Again, if you want to get rid of this noise, which is not really, that's not a lot of information there. If you want to get rid of that, you can always turn this up a little bit. That way it's more attuned to the details you're looking for. The next option is the amount of bands that are available. Here is really where I was a little bit disappointed. If you set it to transient mode, you lose a lot of the detail in the low end. Obviously, because the goal is to just observe transients mostly. Let's take a part of the song here that has some drums in it. It's quite good at portraying where those transients are taking place and how much spectral emphasis is happening in each part of that signal. I do find it a little bit weird that when I'm toggling between these different modes that I get such vastly different contrasts. 
I was also hoping for a lot more detail in the low end when I crank it to the highest resolution. So I note that these are still pretty big blobby. These are not as detailed as I was hoping for. So I think this is a good point to pull up the Wave Candy analyzer that I have been using thus far in FL Studio. If you're in FL Studio, this comes with the software and absolutely knocks this out of the park when it comes to low-end spectral detail. So let's have a closer look here. Obviously note that you do have to set this to 2048 bands and turn on enhanced frequency. Without that, it looks pretty similar to what we're getting on Vision 4X. Very blobby. Now, once that enhanced frequency is on, we get an incredible amount of detail in the low end. I can literally see each individual harmonic with such incredible contrast. And on top of that, I can actually spot phase relationship. So whenever something is very clean, it looks like a super clean line. But when you have Spectral activity, if you have multiple sine waves that are interacting with each other, you can see, you can spot the phase relationship because it will literally go in and out of phase. You see the bright and dark parts there. You can literally see it go in and out of phase. That's the level of detail that I was hoping for inside of Vision 4X and sadly, we are not getting that. If I do the same exact test, also, another thing is you need to be playing the project in order to get the analyzer to work. So I can just mute everything and play it. So not quite the same level of detail that I was getting inside of Wave Candy. It's getting quite close though. Note that you do need to copy these settings in order to get this result. So if you don't set the map curve like this, Again, you start to lose a little bit more of the detail. So you really need to crank that. And the mode needs to be set to harmonic 8192 bands. Anything else, and again, you lose even more detail. Transient mode, look at how thick this is in comparison. So I was hoping to get this level of precision on the spectral analyzer. And sadly, we're not getting that. However, the plugin does make up for it in other ways. It provides us with an additional spectral analyzer here vertically, which I'm really into. The only problem with that one is that it doesn't really allow us to make the weighing, the spectral balance between the lows, mids, and highs actually completely flat the way that the Fletcher Munson curve insists that our hearing works. If I open this up inside of Span and then I compare it with Vision 4X, you see how actually the mids here are louder than the low end. And this is a flat spectral representation. This is according to our ears sensitivity. Whereas here inside of Vision, we still get the low end pronounced so much louder. Now you can play with that a little bit, but this is pushed as far as I can actually get it to be. So we're still not getting the flat response here. Whereas whenever I am inside of Span, the balance can be much more aggressively adjusted. See, you get much more control here. I would love to be able to get that same flat response here on the bar graph. So even though that's not exactly what I was hoping for in terms of flexibility, you do still have a very nice waveform analyzer here. And this is probably my favorite thing of Vision 4X. So within the waveform, you have the option to set it to the exact same coloration as you have on the spectrum. You can turn that off as well, just keep it white but I do like the additional contrast there. You can set on highlights, which kind of shows which parts are the brightest, as in the most pronounced. And then with the map, it'll take into consideration which frequencies are louder as well. So you can see here, whenever the red sections are happening, you got a lot of bass happening here. And then you can change the speed of these little volume unit meters. Another cool thing is the correlation meter that we get here, also known as a vector scope. 
This will show us the stereo deflection of the signal, essentially tell us how wide the signal is. Personally, I do have one open with Wave Candy here, but I have been mostly relying on the mono, the mid to side relationship inside of Span, as I was showing you guys earlier. Having the amount of side information per part of the frequency spectrum is much more helpful than the total correlation. Because whenever you note that the total signal is too wide, it doesn't tell you exactly which parts of the frequency spectrum are the problem. So you'll need a mid to side relationship to be able to observe where the actual exaggeration in the side signal is happening. So for that reason, I love having the mono signal and the side signal visible at the same exact time. Now, if you don't have FL Studio, I'd still highly recommend getting Vision 4X as your main spectral analyzer because it does provide a lot of useful information about what's going on inside of your mix. Typically, the way that I read these meters inside of Wave Candy and therefore also in Vision 4X is observing the spectral relationship between individual layers. And you can really spot phasing issues when things start to get blurry. When things start to move like this, that signifies that things are getting a little muddy, that there's overlap happening that you might not have intended. If everything looks very clean and polished, as in like there's a lot of contrast in these lines, then that means that there's no phasing happening, that everything is very clean. I can spot the vocal when it's coming in, which is this information right here. So it overlaps a tiny bit here with the upwards sub movement. Now, this is pretty subtle, but if that was more problematic, it would show as a lot more hectic and blurry information there. Uh, if you try to get that same information from vision, it's just not nearly as clear. Even if I tweak the parameters, we get a lot more. Like we can tell, you know, something is happening here, but it's just very blobby. It's not nearly as refined as I was hoping it would be. So that's, I'd say, the main difference between these plugins, just the ability to really get the detailed information from what's going on spectrally. So two things I would love to get a little bit more control over inside of Vision 4X is the weighing of the low end compared to the mids and highs, making sure that this doesn't look as overpowering as it suggests that it is. And another thing is additional visual resolution in these low frequencies, especially. That way you can really monitor phase relationship between these individual sine waves that we are observing. All right, I think that concludes the comparison. Now, no shade on this plugin. Obviously, they did an amazing job. I love the waveform analyzer and the overall spectral analyzer. I was just hoping to get a little bit more detail out of it. So if you're not an FL Studio user, I would still highly recommend getting this plugin. It's probably the best alternative out there. So big ups to Noisia and Excite Audio for making something that's gonna help a lot of people understand their music better and I would love to see some updates on this that gives us a little bit more flexibility. Now, thank you guys for watching the tutorial. If you do have additional questions or suggestions about other things you want to learn about, don't hesitate dropping it in the comments below. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to stay in the loop with more tutorials and reviews. Definitely reach out to me via Instagram if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.